Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel, Just Some Bodhi's Opinion. My name is Bodhi, and today I'm gonna give you a tour around the Wheel of Time TV show map. Now, whenever I was talking to my non-reader friends and family, there was a lot of opportunity to talk about the map of the Wheel of Time. Unfortunately, we are not treated that in the show itself. Now, we know that there's bonus content that you can access via the website browser, but because there wasn't an easily available map for people to follow, there were times of confusion that even I had. And so I thought I could make this guide for my friends, family, and of course, to anyone else who was a bit confused. Now, I know they were trying to avoid the whole Game of Thrones opening sequence where uh, we see the entire map of Westeros, but we're in the fantasy genre where maps are life, guys. So I think people would be interested to see the map. So I'll be talking all of episodes one through eight. I'll be going through the map for each of them. And so you'll be able to follow along for each episode. And please take note, I will be using the show map. There were some tweaks regarding where places were versus the book maps. So I will be using the show maps, but the show map itself didn't have a scale. So I'm using the scale of the book map. Anyway, so let's get right into it. I'm now showing you the continent. Now, Robert Jordan did not call this continent anything. Fans have been calling it Randland for years. And now you know why it's called Randland because he revealed himself as the Dragon Reborn at the end of the episode. In the bonus content on Amazon Prime, this is being called The Westlands. So let me just point out some key highlights within the map itself. The first being the spine of the world. This is this monstrous mountain range that splits the continent in half. And so everything to the west of this would be the Westlands. And to the east of this is what is called the Aiel Waste where the Aiel, and we've seen like bits and pieces of what Aiel are, which is a super warrior race of people, which Rand's mom belonged to. Now, just a few more mountain landmarks that we can see across the map. We've got the Mountains of Mist to the left. Yes, that is a tribute to the Misty Mountains. And this is where fabled Manetheran, the mountain home, would be found. To the north, we have the Mountains of Doom, Yet again, another Lord of the Rings reference. And beyond the Mountains of Doom is the Blight. And finally, smack dab at the middle of all of this is Dragon Mount, which is where Rand was born and which is spitting distance from Tarvalon. Now, to get our heads around the distances, the distance from the westernmost shore to the Eye of the World is 3,600 miles. To put this into perspective, the continental United States is 2,618 miles wide. And so continental US could fit within around two thirds of the Westlands. So let's get into the episodes. In episode one, we only have one setting and that's the two rivers nestled right next to the mountains of mist, if you recall. Now, the show map did not give us a double click of the two rivers so I'm going to borrow from the books just to show you why it's called the two rivers so this is the book map for the two rivers and you can see to the west we have the mountains of mist and bordering the two rivers north and south we have the river Taran and the white river in the bottom this is why the two rivers is called the two rivers. And th that's why this place is very much isolated from the rest of the world. Now in the books, the two rivers is actually a larger area where it is made up of four other towns, Taran Ferry, Watch Hill, Emmons Field, Devon Ride. And our protagonists begin in Emmons Field. In the show, it's just called the two rivers. But we're basically situated here in the Emmons Field part. Rand's farm is near the Westwood. And at the end of the episode, we see that the Trollocs are coming and they have to ride towards the north, towards Taran Ferry. So on to episode two, where the shadow waits. And so we're back to the show map. So from the two rivers, 
they go towards Taran Ferry where they have to cross the River Taran. This is where Moraine sinks the boat and the ferryman and they continue running away from the Trollocs. And then they get to Aspen Forest where they have an unfortunate meetup with the White Cloaks. So while they're going this way, Moraine's already suspicious with Lan as to the direction that they're going because she's like, this is going towards the Shadowed City, which they end up going to, Shadow Logo. And this is where the episode ends where the party is split by the shadow of Shadow Logoth and we move on to episode 3, A Place of Safety. This is where we split the party. Let's first talk about Perrin and Egwene. Perrin and Egwene are running, running, running through this grassy plain called the Caroline Grass. This is where they will meet the Tinkers, you know, the pacifist hippies. And you would note that the wolves were guiding them towards the Tinkers. Now let's talk about Rand and Matt. Rand and Matt, if you recall the start of episode 3, Rand and Matt are going through this rocky mountainous range and that's over here. And they will keep on going until they get to Green Spring where they will meet up with Tom the Gleeman and Dana the Dark Friend. Now as for Moraine Nynaeve Lan, they were somewhere nearby Shadar Logoth because they couldn't move Moraine so much. And so most of the episode, we see Nynaeve trying to do her wisdom herbal concoctions to help Moraine. By the end of the episode, Lan has located the Aes Sedai, who were coming from Gaeldan, and so they make their way to the Aes Sedai camp. And so on to episode 4. Now for episode 4, The Dragon Reborn, there's actually not so much movement for our characters. But before that, Let's talk about the cold open where we see Loghain, the false dragon, going through Gaelden and conquering. So that's around here. And so you can see that the Aes Sedai hadn't moved so much since Gaelden. So they were still on their way to Tarvalon from there. Anyway, so for Perrin and Egwene, they were just in transit through the Carolyn Grass where they were just going with the Tinkers. We see here the wonderful conversation between Ila and Perrin, but all of that is happening as they transit towards Tarvalon via the Caroline Grass. For Matt, Tom, and Ran, they end up in the Grinwell farm where we meet super cute Elsa Grinwell and her doll Brigitta, and who all get slaughtered by the Fade. I thought it was Matt at the first watch, but it wasn't. It was the Fade. But this is where we start seeing the effects of the dagger on Matt and where suspicions from Tom about Matt being a channeler is being conveyed to Rand and Rand telling Matt that he's always going to be there for him. And finally, let's talk about Lan, Nynaeve, and Moraine all recuperating within the Aes Sedai camp and we get a lot of world building with the Aes Sedai, with the warriors and this is where Loghain's followers end up catching up to them and all sorts of things happen with Nynaeve's raging sun moment and the gentling of Loghain. And so, on to episode 5. Blood calls blood. This is where we get a one month later. And judging from the distance, the Aes Sedai had the longest way to go to get to Tarvalon. Because they basically had more than a thousand miles to get there. They must have been really pushing their horses because that was a lot of distance to cover especially since they were going through the rocky places where Rand and Matt had gone through, unless they had gone through the river. But anyway, that's why I'm glad that we had the one month later. Because if you'll see, this is also where Perrin and Egwene are caught by the White Cloaks. And so that's that was a very short way, but then maybe the pacifist hippies were very slow in going through the Caroline grass. So this is where Perrin and Egwene are tortured. And then from the Grinwell farm, we also see that scene where Rand says, that looks familiar when he sees Dragon Mount. Hint, hint. And within the same episode, Rand and Matt get into Tarvalon. And so for episode five, Everyone except for Perrin and Egwene have gotten to Tarvalon. And so we get to episode 6, The Flame of Tarvalon. And everything happens within Tarvalon. Except for the cold open, 
where we see young Swan helping her father with the nets. And that's actually in Tyr, which is the southernmost kingdom. Now, I'm pointing here at the Fingers of the Dragon, which is where the setting of Swan's home was. And by the end of the cold open, we see her bidding goodbye to her father because she's gonna paddle her way all the way to Tarvalon. If you'll see, there's a, this is a river. There's a river all the way from Tyr to Tarvalon. But canonically, this is 1,600 miles. I am hoping that Swan did not paddle her way all throughout. But maybe she did. That's Swan. But anyway, the rest of the episode happens within Tarvalon, where we see Aes Sedai politics, where we see, where we see Moraine being very blue Aja and keeping tabs on where everyone is. But basically, everyone here is in Tarvalon. At the end of the episode, after Moraine and Swan get married in front of everyone, Maureen is exiled and and they meet up in the Waygate outside of Tarvalon to make their way to the Eye of the World. And this is where Matt is left behind as the ways close. So on to episode 7, The Dark Along the Ways. So the start of this episode is within the ways, so that's not on the map. But they get to Faldara, which is all the way here to the north and judging from the distance this seems to be a thousand miles apart so the one night within the ways saved them about a month's journey and so they get to Faldara they meet Lord Agelmar and Lady Amalisa they meet men this was my favorite episode so so we see a lot of things happen within this episode within Faldara we see Nynaeve and Land Bond and Bang we see the argument blow up and then Egwene and Rand bang and release the tension. And then we see Rand wake up, realize that he's a dragon, confirm that with Min, go to Moraine and say, it's me, I'm the dragon. And then by the end of the episode, they had left for the eye of the world, leaving the party behind. And so we get to the finale. So for the finale, we split the party into two. One part is in Faldara while Moraine and Rand go off to the Blight to look for the Eye of the World. Now, we're already at the northern end of the map. And if I zoom in, so we see here Faldara. And then right in front of it, we have Tarwin's Gap. And so beyond that is the Blight. And beyond, beyond that is the Eye of the World somewhere. And we could surmise that Malkir was around here where we see the Seven Towers. And so Moraine and Rand confront the Dark One in the Eye of the World. Nynaeve and Egwene become part of a five-woman circle and slaughter 10,000 Drolocks. And Perrin basically does nothing as he watches Loyal and these Shine Iron soldiers get stabbed by Padanfe. And that's the finale. And that was the map of the Wheel of Time. Now, I do have some bonus content for the countries in the Wheel of Time because my friends had been asking about the countries and they didn't have any sense of like a national entity. So let me talk about the countries that we had encountered in the Wheel of Time. The first and largest nation within the Westlands is called Andor. This is where the Two Rivers is situated. And as you can see, it cuts across all the way till the Grinwell Farm. Now to the south of it is Gaeldon where Loghain's armies had conquered. Tarvalon is a city-state with the Amerlin seat as the de facto head of that island. And finally, we have Shinar. I know my friends had some confusion as to the difference between Shinar and Faldara, which is here. Shinar is the country, which is this massive piece of land, and Faldara is the city. And so Lord Agilmar is just the lord of Faldara not the Lord of Shinar. So yeah, that was the map of the Wheel of Time TV show. We started in the two rivers here nestled between the Mountains of Mist and the two rivers that bordered it. They crossed Taran Ferry. They went all the way till Shatter Logoth where they got split up into three groups. They all make their way to Tarvalon where afterwards they take a way gate and go straight into Faldara where we get the climax with the eye of the world, all within this continent. I hope you guys found that informative. For myself, I love maps. I read a lot of fantasy, so maps for me are life. I've got in front of me the Wheel of Time Companion, 
and the map is just beautiful. So I hope that gave you perspective as to where our characters were going throughout the TV series. And I hope we get to explore more of this world in season 2. Super excited about that. Oh, by the way, for the cold close of episode 8, we see that in the far western shore, there's this brand new fleet that seems to have summoned a tsunami. This is the far western shore. So excited to see what's up for season 2. Anyway, that's all for now. If you liked listening to me talk about this type of thing, this is the type of thing that I am continuing to do on my channel. I do reviews and some Wheel of Time analyses. Please like and subscribe if you like that type of thing. Comment down below, let me know what you thought about this map. Did it help you? Please share it to your friends if they need a guide. And I'll see you next time. Somebody's opinion.